everyone, and welcome to the very last, very special Twin Flames live talk show. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. I'm your host, Jeff, and here is my lovely wife and Twin Flame, Shalia. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Oh, I'm so happy that you decided to come. Yeah, I had to come. <laughs> I'm usually always watching live mm -hmm. and like, you know, in the comments and chatting with people and, you know, reading the mm. comments and stuff, but I thought, uh, maybe I'll just slide into this one and, mm -hmm. you know, say hi. And, well, we're so yeah. glad to have you. It's uh, almost like the old T-Fast days. Sort of, except for YouTube slash, like, live in our Facebook group. It's so awesome. Well, it's nice because in this live, uh, the very last talk show, we're going to spend the whole time... Uh, answering your questions. So I know some of you already know and you can already get going. I've got my laptop over here in order to read the questions off. So uh, feel free to get started on asking your questions. Yeah. It's like a TFAS class, only everyone is invited. Yeah. And this is just so special. It's so near and dear to our hearts. If you don't know, TFAS is, stands for a TFAS, a Twin Flame Ascension School. It is the legendary uh, school which teaches you not only how to have harmonious union with your true twin flame which it, it's been immensely mm -hmm. successful at that but it teaches you how to live a more peaceful and harmonious life and get everything that you want and the replay value is huge huge uh, we've got mm -hmm. co ascension coaches certified ascension coaches who've watched all 450 hours of twin flame ascension school the all classes pass all the way through already, and they're going for their next lap. And over the mm -hmm. years, I'm sure they'll get many, many laps. It's just such a valuable opportunity. Yeah. Highly recommend you check it out. If you go to our website, Twin Flames Ascension School or Twin Flames Universe .com, <laughs> you can go to that website, so it'll redirect you. Yeah. Uh, you can get yourself uh, a login for free, and and get uh, I think it's five classes you can watch for free, and they're 90 minutes. It's quite a quite a good value. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna check over here to the Facebook, yeah, and uh, we'll see if we've got any group. Any questions yet from the group? I think you have to refresh it. Yeah. Yeah, ask your questions. We'd love to help you um, on your Twin Flame journey, wherever you are on your Twin Flame journey, whether you're in separation or union or you're in harmonious union, married even. Um, and, you know, wherever you are, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to ask your questions in the group. So I see, I see it here on the phone. But I don't see it on the Facebook group yet. So let me, let me just hit refresh again. It should be here and everyone, there's 49 people watching. Okay, just give us a second. Uh, click on your name, yeah? Okay, click, on, click, on click on your name. Will that like tell it? Show Maybe. You? Oh, there it yeah. is. Oh, oh it looks so good. Look at us. Sweet. Go wow. by comments. Okay. Okay. I think we're here. We're, we're about to uh, check out the comments. Here we go. I think I see a, this might be a question from Azul. Azul says, in my journey through teachings of, uh, your teachings in Shalia, I'm realizing that the twin flame path is probably the least about achieving the desired harmonious union. For my part, I'm discovering what I desire the most is the peace that I find after each block heal. Mm. I want to live in that peace and unconditional love uh, for myself and my relationship with God. How much truth is there in this? How can I really live in the present and in this connection with God? I'm tired of feeling bad and I'm ready to be okay. This is a great question. That's a good question. She's yeah. really saying, uh, she realized, you know, a lot of people come here for Twin Flames. They come here yeah. because they hear the call. And uh, we described this in our YouTube video, um, uh, Twin Flames Explained. Yeah. And we talk about how Twin Flames are a call to ascension, a call back home to your creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you realize that that's the reality of what it is, once you recognize that you are uh, ascending your vibration and that you're, even though your twin flame is, it, every single person's always said when they have a harmonious union, far, far higher than their insanely high expectations. Yep. <laughs> Even though that's the reality, everyone comes to realize, well, that's just the tiniest little piece yeah. of what is here. Yeah. This is the tiniest piece of the kingdom of heaven, and it's a fundamental, foundational piece. Right. 
but um, the, the commenter was asking, how do I have that peace everywhere in my life? I think it's for me, like just releasing expectations mm -hmm. and attachments. I think really attachments is like the big thing. Um, uh, being okay with what happens. You know, and I think that's really the secret to peace is I don't mind what happens. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you are, you know, giving up on your dreams or that you're permissive to, you know, bad or not so good things or feelings. But it just means that you release control and attachment. And when you do, you're going to find this deeper dimension of peace within you, um, which is highly attractive and magnetic for your twin flame, by the way. Because that's where you both live, and I think <laughs> that's, you know, I think that's very helpful. <laughs> so, uh, for me, it's a journey, and uh, you work through, and you've probably heard this many, many times, if you've seen Twin Flame Ascension School, we really, uh, we, we revisit this subject a lot. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you just work one step at a time, and uh, when you come into the present moment, as Shalia was saying, not minding what happens, not expecting, um, like if you're gonna build a, a, a kingdom for yourself, you don't look at the, the blacksmith shop and stand there and wait until it's done and then think, wow, this is just one tiny step in the kingdom. <laughs> when the stables are done, I'll feel better. Uh, when the palace is done, I'll feel better. When all these things are done, I'll feel better. And I'll only feel good when it's all complete. You're gonna feel really bad for a really long time. But if you recognize that it's a journey and that there's joy in raising that blacksmith shop, there's joy in raising those stables, there's joy in building that palace, there's joy in seeing the kingdom come together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can just see it as you getting to know every little piece of the kingdom. You don't need to see it as unfinished, you can see it as complete and you're coming to see it. But more than that, it's important to recognize that there is peace and there is joy in the process. And if you don't find that joy and that peace and that delight uh, and that fulfillment in the process, you're gonna be just as miserable as if you didn't have the process at all. And if you don't recognize that the process is incredibly valuable, is uh, incredibly fulfilling, has brought so much to your life just knowing the process, then uh, you're gonna feel pretty miserable. But if you recognize, you appreciate, you value what you've stumbled upon, what you've attracted in, uh, in this teaching, and that you're using it to your benefit, and that the you who didn't have the teaching was uh, not quite as well off as the you with the teaching, you're going to be uh, very happy, and you're going to be able to cultivate that peace right now. The peace you're seeking in summation does not come from everything being done. Mm -hmm. It comes from uh, knowing that everything is getting done and that yeah. you will get it done, and that you're enjoying the process, and that mm -hmm. it is God who moves through you to achieve it. It was God who planted the dream in your heart in the first place. It's not even your dream. <laughs> All <laughs> dreams belong to God. Mm. Yeah. Really love having you back. Oh, <laughs> you're my babe. Ah. <laughs> okay. So Annalisa says, what is my sister going through exactly? How can I help her? What is my life purpose? And how can I figure it out? Well, I invite you to ask the question again and give us a little more detail. I know that you know that we're divine channels, uh, but I don't really like feel the need to exercise psychic abilities. So just ask us a, ask us a question that uh, we can answer live on the air without having to channel and you know maybe guess. You want right. to scroll further up. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of questions. Yeah. Like, there's one I caught. Right, right. Oh my gosh, here they're coming. These questions are so coming. So there's a little, so you just scroll down from okay. her. Okay, just get this up closer here. Thank you for your question, Azul. Okay, so scroll. And okay. Oh, not a question, but I love this group. I love this group, too. Thank you. Thanks we for all your group. love and all your compliments. Thank you. So Ajahn says, can you explain what it means to explore being twin flames completely? And how to know you're not giving up too soon? Good question. Mm -hmm. This is really significant in determining uh, who is a false twin flame and who is a true twin flame. Mm -hmm. Do you want to feel it or? No, I just was. Okay. <laughs> that was just my piece, you know. Yeah. Okay. You got it. 
All right, I was going to try to make it work since you're here, but... No, because usually when I start talking a lot, then you want to say... I want to hear what you have to say. Oh, oh, we miss oh, you. Oh, okay. We value you. you. Can we raise a hand? So usually, like, um, you know, for me, what it means to explore Twin Flames completely, it means to take the relationship all the way to the very end. Mm -hmm. And by that, it means... When you know unequivocally that you're choosing love and you're choosing your healing and you're choosing um, success and moving forward, like you have a very clear vision about, um, you know, being in, in a relationship and uh, with your twin flame and what that feels like. And, um, you know, I think if it's not aligning because they're pushing against that and moving themselves further away, then that's a very clear indication that that person is not your twin flame because if you're choosing self-love, if you're choosing to love God and put God first in your life and uh, you know, you're know um, you choosing your healing and your well-being, like all the things that cultivate love and health within yourself, that's all things that naturally are attractive to your twin flame. As you can imagine, that's attractive to you, um, you know, what you like about them and so forth. And, you know, if they're just not there for you or if they are there for you, but they, they want something, there's a price, um, you know, because you feel yourself up inside and then they come and knock in. It's mm -hmm. like a poor, <laughs> it's like a poor person that like wants a handout because they mm -hmm. see, you know, you kind of have maybe a little bit of money in your wallet and you could spare some change mm -hmm. but really that doesn't help any you know, it doesn't help in the long run and so that can also be a huge indication well and you come to the end in a state of peace and there's no anger or All resentment peace, yeah. you come to the end after uh exploring it very intimately within yourself it's yeah. not like a oh hey you want to do stuff with me and they're like no no oh okay you're not my twin flame it's not that it's you invested you gave everything you put yourself on the line completely because god guided you to this person right and in so doing and opening yourself up and being vulnerable and offering your love and recognizing there's no uh real connection here you should come to a state of deep peace and deep fulfillment and yeah. deep completion and deep knowing there should be no real question in your mind you should be able to look clearly at the logic and it should say very clearly, this is not my person. There's nothing pointing me to this person anymore. I feel complete in moving on and uh, I know exactly what I must do next. Right. I know like for me, my false twin flame, it was just very clear towards the end. Like we were not in alignment. Our values didn't line up. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter how many times I explained my values and I lived my values, like we were just clashing and contrasting and like there was just discord in our home rather than like harmony and love and, and growing and love and peace. Mm -hmm. And I just like woke up one day and I just looked at him like, you're kind of a stranger, you know, and even the circumstances that we met, like, hmm, it was pretty fast, you know, mm -hmm. we met at a festival and then, you know, a couple of weeks later we were like, let's move in together, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, I, I mean, I followed my, I followed the thread that we talked about in our book. All the signs were there, and uh, it did ultimately lead me to Jeff. I had some pretty um, challenging patterns to heal, and, uh, you know, my false twin flame was compassionate enough, his soul, to help me heal those patterns. And I felt peaceful when I when I looked at him, and I and it was like the the glasses went off, the rose colored glasses, where I was like, I, I'm not attached if you're my twin flame or not. I just want to know the truth. And so you know, after meditation and and waking up, I looked at him and I was like, Yeah, you're not my twin flame because like you don't live where I live on the inner. Like you're not there with me, and you're not building the life of my slash our dreams, you know, mm -hmm. we share the same dream. You're not building that life with me, so you mustn't be my twin flame. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I I felt really comfortable breaking up with them, and I was amazing. I was, I've always been really good at it. I tell Jeff all the time, I was, 
I would make my boyfriend's ex-boyfriends feel so empowered about breaking up with me. <laughs> because I would just say the truth and I'd just be so peaceful about it and say, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, I don't want to hold you back. Like, I know I'm not the right person for you. And, like, you're not happy. And uh, I'm not happy. Like, mm -hmm. and when you provide logic, I know, you know, sometimes with, I don't want to, like, call out the feminine. But it can be hard when you break up with someone. And it can be a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're able to, you know, maybe do some yoga or meditate before you break up, I really <laughs> recommend that. So that you're coming from a calm, peaceful, and rational place. And the person that you're breaking up with can maybe is more compassionate. Beautiful. So I think there's more questions. We <laughs> okay, can, let's there's tons and yeah, tons yeah. of questions. Keep your questions coming. We got plenty of time, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to yours too. So thank you so much for your question, Ajin. Thank you. So uh, Tess Ivers says I'm moving at a lower vibration and have been for several years because of my addiction. And my biggest question is how can I acquire self love when I've abandoned myself in life for so many years? Where is the first place to start? Beautiful question, well, and congratulations on your courage for asking it. Congratulations. Yeah. So let's talk about addiction. Addiction gives you something. That's why you do it. Your substance, whatever it may be, your, your activity, whatever it may be, that addiction is give, filling you up in a way. You get something for it. If you're mm -hmm. doing the drug, it makes you feel good in a way. It helps you to escape something. You get to avoid something, and, and maybe it's something really painful that you don't want to address. And uh, typically with an addiction, it, an addiction is preventing you from feeling or experiencing something uh, really uh, uncomfortable. And the benefit is, if you, if you use the substance, you don't have to feel it anymore. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, in a medicinal standpoint, that's very helpful. The point of a medicine is not to remain with it, it's to move beyond it. Yeah. Um, but it seems like maybe in your case, you're just afraid. And I think when you learn to move beyond this by, um, you know, finding the next piece of your healing of your addiction, um, then you're going to start building self-trust. And this is critical to self-love. Because if you trust yourself and you're building trust within yourself, mm -hmm. then you're healing, abandoning yourself. So like if you know, for instance, that you're never going to touch that substance again because you made a new choice and you have um, steps and goals placed in support uh, that you're utilizing and resources you're utilizing to help he you heal from this addiction, then you're going to build that self-trust. Like I trust that I'm not going to touch that. And um, because I am doing this and this and this, and this fills me up inside, and I actually feel good doing this, rather than this other thing that is actually harmful to me. Um, and so that's really like key, and that kind of energy will continue mm -hmm. to uh, build upon itself. So it's finding the thing that is going to fill you up is going to give you something as good or better than what the addiction gives you. Mm -hmm. And we find that uh, a spiritual process is a, an immensely uh, beneficial tool for resolving the problem at the root. Um, if you are f starting to feel your feelings, if you just try uh, getting off the substance a little bit, you know, yeah. taking a little bit longer than you would normally engage with it, Right. And recognizing how you feel before you engage with your, your substance, which is your comfort zone again. Right. So I'm not encouraging you to continue to take the substance. I'm encouraging you to slowly wean yourself off. And when you just right. take a little space and notice how do you feel when you do that, and you're probably going to feel fairly bad at first. Mm -hmm. And acknowledging that this is the feeling that you've been avoiding. And if you start to face it little by little, then the strength that you are looking for and the comfort that you are looking for no longer comes from the damaging substance and addiction, but it comes from uh, your own strength. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're changing, uh, you're making a change, and that change is I'm finding strength in myself and in God, hopefully, uh, and I'm no longer needing that substance to provide me the strength and the comfort that I need. I know when I first started learning the mirror exercise um, almost a decade ago, I used to have a cigarette addiction. It was only like six months long, 
but you know I worked I had a stressful job I you know was like a busser and a waitress at a uh, at a restaurant and it was like a high volume restaurant and at a uh, you know in a busy tourist town and so the only way for me to one of the ways I found for me to cope was to take breaks and smoke cigarettes and uh, you know, eventually I'm like, I know this isn't healthy. I don't, I already could be very susceptible to cancer because there's a family history of cancer. And I know this isn't like the way I want to cope. And, uh, and so I physically fit on the physical, I switched, um, to the lighter cigarettes and then completely off to, I guess what you would call like a herbal mix where it didn't have tobacco, but it had like I think it had like sage in it and it had, um, I, was it mugwort? I don't know. But you can get like a, her, a supplement and um, I found it at my health food store. Mm -hmm. And so I started smoking that and it filled me with so much calm. I think there was lavender in there too. Mm -hmm. And like that started to like uh, really help. I was getting what I needed through that. Well, I was, I, I remember when you first met me in Sedona, still smoking, you still a few of those I was still smoking the uh, herbal pack, but it's much better. Than, it's almost like tea in a way. Like you could brew mm -hmm. it or you could smoke it. <laughs> it's not an advertisement for herbal cigarettes. No, it. no, no, it's not. But I'm just it's saying. It's a good step away from And so, cigarettes. you know, while I was there you know, doing that, smoking that, I was also doing the mirror exercise and healing the situation that was creating so much stress and, um, you know, and like disharmony in my life. And once I got to the root of that and healed what that was, I didn't need to buy any more uh, of the herbal. And it actually didn't feel good to, I think when the last smoke I had, like it actually felt really bad. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. I'm good. <laughs> and I was done. I just stopped. Mm -hmm. And I never smoked since. <laughs> because of uh, that, that feeling that you were looking for, that the cigarettes, the heavy cigarettes, and then the light cigarettes, and the herbal cigarettes gave you, uh, ultimately you started to fill yourself up inside yeah. and that that joy and that comfort and that peace and that strength came and comes now from within yeah so even though it might seem like well those are wonderful things these cigarettes and these herbal supplements but uh, in reality the wonderful thing exists inside of you and yeah. now you get to go around with that wonderful feeling all the time right. and you have no need of the substance anymore it's true. Uh, to fill you up inside. Even though at the time I felt some sort of relief from smoking, um, I also noticed smoking made me feel really heavy. Even mm. uh, even the herbal stuff, it was not as heavy as like nicotine cigarettes, but like it made me feel heavy. And uh, the high I was really searching is, is natural, is from within. Mm -hmm. well, so, beautiful question. Thank yeah, you so much thank for you. asking. The questions are coming in here. So, uh, Aprajita says, I'm in separation and my twin is married. He thinks he's too old to start a life afresh and he has kids. How do I heal this? He also feels he will... Oh. What the questions are popping. Oh, no. Wait. There's so many questions popping. Oh, no. I think it, got, it, it was up. You're going down. You need to yeah, go I went down. to the top. This is the top. Oh. Uh. So, I, I think your question might be lost. Nope. No. Well, I think maybe we can get the gist of it, that, you know, your twin flame is um, in a relationship with a, a karmic twin flame, possibly, and has children, and is not interested in dismantling his life mm -hmm. to, for him, go on a maybe, or so when. false twin flame, you mean? Well, it could be, it could be your false twin flame, it could be a real you know, your real twin flame. No, I'm saying, you said karmic twin flame. Oh, karmic? You said karmic twin flame, and I'm just correcting. Oh, okay, well, that, was, we what, say that, that so. was what was in the, uh, in no, the okay. question. So, and I guess false and karmic it is kind of the same thing. And like, yeah, I, don't I mean, know. it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really I, matter. I kind of push against that term. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, how do you want to answer this one? Um... Well, first I want to say that karmic twin flame or karmic is really just soulmate, someone who you've maybe been with for many lifetimes, um, mm -hmm. and your karma keeps you together, really your choice. But uh, I thought you were doing a beautiful job, but I just wanted to make sure that... Oh, that... yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Well, first off, like, you can't, you can't force or beg him or really, like, ask him to leave his wife and his children, um, but you can do the inner work 
that attracts your twin flame to you mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do any of this kind of exhaust emotionally and exhausting mm -hmm. uh, work and feelings of is he going to leave and you know mm -hmm. he's with you know the wrong woman and I'm the right woman like mm -hmm. that's really hard on you emotionally and spiritually and I just mm -hmm. suggest giving it to God mm -hmm. and continuing on your twin flame journey and doing your inner work and as mm -hmm. you do your inner work like I was saying in my earlier um, you know earlier answer to the question I'm talking about my false twin flame like um, you know we just as I was continuing to go deeper and choosing my twin flame and choosing our life vision my life vision that I knew were my dreams that God was giving me um, that we would have to we would have to be together like I I don't have to do anything I don't even have to put on makeup for for Jeff to come around I don't have to have sex with him if I don't want to I don't have to do shit <laughs> I just have to like sit here and love myself and choose God which I naturally do anyway mm -hmm. and like he showed up one day on my Facebook feed <laughs> trolling me as you mm -hmm. have probably read in our book and ever since then like we couldn't be apart it was like we just we couldn't be apart and I think even if one of us were uh, you know uh, married or dating someone else or even had kids like like, my kids couldn't stop me from being with my twin flame. Even mm -hmm. though I love them and I've helped bring them into this world, my children could not stop me from my one true love. So you don't need to, and I see this a lot, where people keep themselves in a really uncomfortable situation. Oh, so you don't need to be there in order to bridge, to bridge a gap or anything. That's soulmate stuff. That's not twin flame. Your twin flame uh, is attracted to you automatically and magnetically from your purified state of being. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no other way to attract them but through that purified state of being so we've said this many times we'll say it again don't worry about them don't worry about focus them. on your healing work because your twin flame union isn't about your twin flame that's the funny thing mm -hmm. and that was the first question we feel about. it was the first it's about you and it's about god and mm -hmm. through that your lover can uh, come to you uh next beautiful so roxanne uh jones says, I recently placed a boundary with my twin that I don't want him coming in and out of my life anymore. That if he stays back, he's going to stay. Is this the right thing to do? Well, Roxanne, it sounds like you're trying to control the situation. And uh, there's you're starting to do something right, but at the same time, it's still rooted in a sense of control. And mm -hmm. we want to help enlighten you a little more so that you can... Uh, Feel better? Yeah. Have a, you wanna, you, you're moving toward a healthy situation. Mm -hmm. And you, if you cannot negotiate a healthy relationship from where you're at, uh, you should end the relationship. And I wouldn't worry about whether he's your twin flame or not, or you don't, you can't get, ever get rid of your twin flame. But you should not promote a healthy relationship. What I feel and sense here is uh, you, you still want something from him. Mm -hmm. And so he's just going to come and go as he pleases. Uh, to your detriment in the new opening that you've created. Be willing to say no completely. Be willing to have a complete boundary and uh, be willing to be okay if he doesn't come back. And that doesn't mean uh, accept a sad story of emptiness and loneliness and separation. It means mm -hmm. face down those feelings if that's what arises. And as you purify that, you're no longer going to feel needy. You're no longer going to feel like uh, it's okay for him to come and go as he pleases and walk all over me because I get something from that just like he does Now when you've healed it, you'll have firm boundaries and he'll only be able to approach you in a loving and healthy manner So foundation spiritual foundation first uh, Then twin flame union comes naturally. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Hope? No, you said it perfect. Lots of questions you. coming yeah, in. Yeah, let's so. keep it moving yeah, Keep your questions coming. So Fabian says when it comes to self-sex What's the difference between calming or suppressing it before harmonious union? I think he's asked this one before. Uh, we can just, answer it again. This was answered in TFAS. Yeah. I would just um, not worry about the content. Not worry. If you're, trying to, if you're trying to get your answer out here. You're trying to control and fit things into a box. But uh, meditation and spiritual life is about releasing the box entirely mm -hmm. and it seems like you still have attachment to uh, thought you know what is the right thought well it's beyond thought it's in the state of being mm -hmm. so this is where you're getting tripped up you're attaching yourself to 
a, you're trying to find the right thought, but the right thought doesn't exist for you. The answer you seek is beyond thought. It is in being. It's in being. And that's a state of surrender uh, to God. And when you're willing to move to that level, then your life will improve and you'll find more clarity here. Mm -hmm. So Asali Lanhiri, Asala Lanhiri says, please, how to completely forget about a false twin flame to forgive him. Mm -hmm. uh, completely move on and concentrate on the lesson. Uh, it sounds like you haven't really found the end uh, of the relationship. You've got to sort out uh, all the logic in the relationship. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this is something that a certified Ascension coach can be really helpful in doing. Yeah. If you're new on the journey, or even if even all the Ascension coaches, even the master certified ones, still see their Ascension coach uh, every week. So uh, in this circumstance, I gave you the quick answer, but a lot of inner work is required here. And mm -hmm. uh, the complete solution is get yourself hooked up with an Ascension coach and have them help you work through it layer by layer, piece by piece. Right. I know like that's what my uh, spiritual teacher and coach did for me, um, you know, well over like about eight, seven, eight years ago when I went through my false twin flame. Uh, she helped me unpack a lot of my feelings and thoughts and upsets surrounding that relationship so that I could finally feel peace and in order to leave someone completely, you have to love them. And that is what my teacher and coach helped me do. And then, you know, I was able to completely like, move on. So, so uh, thank you for that. Carissa says, in practicing the mirror exercise, I tend to get stuck on the give love to the part of yourself that is hurt part, oh, step good. four. Okay. I don't feel like I know um, how or how to do so effectively to truly heal advice. Beautiful question. Did you want to start feeling it? Um, you kind of had it, I think. You can... Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I'll just come in. And then sure. Go. So, uh, when you so let's just go through all the steps of the mirror exercise. Mm -hmm. Step one, um, I'm upset at George because he's you know uh, playing well, loud music. Right, because he's upsetting you for whatever reason. I'm upset at George because I'm playing loud music. He's playing loud music. And uh, I'm upset at myself because I'm playing loud music, you know, like that. that I guess sense. that doesn't make any sense. Right. So you want to dig deeper. Into so this it. is when you want to dig deeper. People make this classic mistake. Well, I don't, yeah. you know, but it's about you have to go to the deeper, um, to the deeper layer, to the, you know, what is it about it exactly? My mm -hmm. spiritual teacher would help me dig further all the time when I would get stuck on this part, um, because it's an important part to master. Is having you actually feel your feelings, but what is the actual real upset? And, you know, step one can help point you to the actual upset. It might not be the actual upset. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of irony sometimes. So after you've dug into it, you found, oh, I don't like that, you know, whatever George, whatever I change Playing loud music, yeah. Playing loud music. It's not a lot, I love music, I love loud music. It's just that George plays bad music. Well, what, what is bad music? So you get down to the point that George is not respecting me. Basically, you just feel George disrespected. Is, yeah. I feel disrespected by George. And I'm, second step is I'm upset at myself because I feel disrespected by myself. And then the, the third step is, is there any truth to that? And usually when you've, re when you've really got it, uh, every single time, you, you'll feel like this resonance. Like, oh, yeah. like, I really am disrespecting myself. And you don't necessarily need to know how. You can just feel that hurt part of yourself that's feeling disrespected. Mm -hmm. And when you've acknowledged that and identified it, you just be with that part of yourself. You just remain present with. And you'd be surprised how many solutions to your problem will arise just from the fourth step. Because maybe, you know, um, you are guided to say something to George in a kind and compassionate way, but that also, um, you know, gently uh, communicates you know, well, this, I don't like this. Or if you had self-respect and if that was what was missing and George was disrespecting you, right, you right. might feel compelled to go up to George and say, hey, you know, your music's a little loud in the middle of the night. Maybe you turn it down a few notches. Right. And George would be like, oh my God, I didn't realize that you could right. hear it. I'm, I just soundproofed my basement. I'll turn it down a few notches. I, I, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. And now you have a situation of self-respect. Or maybe uh, it, it no longer bothers you. You're totally cool with it. Right. But uh, the mirror exercise is a really useful tool for resolving problems in your reality. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, she's asking, Carissa's asking about the fourth step a little more. Yeah, okay. So uh, you want to get present with yourself. You want to really get clear on what do you need to feel loved right now? Well, maybe it's just a little respect. And then you offer that respect to yeah. that part of yourself. Yeah. And you realize that that does fill you up. Mm -hmm. And if it's not filling you up, it's because you haven't really found the hurt, you haven't identified it properly, and you're not loving that part of yourself uh, completely. Mm -hmm. Love is natural. And I think your real block is that you have to do something to love, but all you have to do is show up and love flows. Yeah. So I hope that helps. You'd be surprised if just with showing up and being present with your inner self or your inner child, what miracles can unfold from that experience. So Miriam, yeah, thank you for that question. Miriam Tyro says, I've been born with heart disease issues since my birth. How can I love myself there and gain harmony within my heart? Mm -hmm. um, I've said this many times, and I've found that uh, a, lot, a lot of times, if you're experiencing like an incurable disease, a disorder, or something you're born with, uh, it's karmic related. And in our previous talk show uh, with Marley, her twin flame Josh has schizophrenia. And this is... Uh, a result of a long-term pattern of his to kind of veer off his path. And this is what karma is. It's something that pushes you back on the path. So your heart condition is uh, requesting something of you. It's teaching you something. It's putting you back on track. It's focusing you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To living a healthy life. So uh, this is where coping mechanisms are really helpful because uh, in, in our previous live, uh, talk show, Josh had a way to live a healthy life that would be almost as if he didn't have schizophrenia. But it would require all of these specific things, a healthy foundation, uh, a stable and consistent lifestyle. Schedule, Schedule yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, habits. Habits. And all of that might Order. be heavy, but that heaviness uh, is really just grounding. Mm -hmm. And Josh has to give up something in order to be healthy. But the thing he's going to give up uh, and he's going to work toward is uh, it's, it's going to help him. It's going to give him the thing that he actually wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, uh, oops, many questions. Missy Brown says, I have a question. I had a dream. Uh, oh, had a dream about my twin flame. He had on all black and he came into a club with his friend. I asked his friend, why do you all have masks on? And my twin took off the mask off and was staring at me. Would you be able to help me understand what that dream might mean? Uh, you know what? I, I'd rather just direct you to Brianne Price. Mm -hmm. She's excellent at interpreting dreams. She has a dream workshop. And uh, there's great resources there. This is a whole sticky subject. Uh, it requires a lot of intimacy and connection. It's, it's not something I can quickly answer for you and have it be meaningful and useful. Mm -hmm. um, but dream interpretation is very valuable. A very useful tool. Shalia and I do it every day. Pretty yeah, much. pretty much every day. Much every day. We, whenever we have a dream, uh, at least we'll look at our own dreams. If it's more important than just for our own processing, we'll share the dreams. Right. And there's beautiful things. Beautiful insights. Beautiful insights yeah. that come from these yeah. dreams. It's really helpful. Yeah. So definitely check out Brienne Price. Yeah, she's in the she's a master certified ascension coach in harmonious union of twin flame. Fantastic woman. Check her out. Yeah. Good. So, uh... Oh, hey, that's, uh... Oh, what's her married name? It's, oh, shoot! Sorry. Sorry, Brianne. <laughs> it's Brianne Sand. Brianne Price Sand. Price Sand. Yeah, S-A-N-D. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Adam is like, I married that woman. Excuse us. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we watched your wedding. We were there. We were there at your wedding, yeah. <laughs> Donna Kerr. Uh, Coronado says, my twin flame and I are very similar. I both acknowledge deep love for us. Then he pulls back and disappears. Almost four years. Mm. We live close by. Saw him once in 2020. He doesn't want to be tied down. And he's afraid of his feelings. He's also unhappy in marriage that's not legal in the United States. Well, uh, this is not uncommon. Don't you worry. Uh, this teaching has everything you need in order to help you find peace here and come into harmonious union with your true twin flame. Mm -hmm. I've got mine right here. Hi. She didn't go anywhere. Uh, no. She didn't leave me. She's not mad at me. No. Uh, she's simply preparing to have a baby. Yeah, and going deeper in our marriage and our union. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah. taking care of our home and our nesting in the home, home yeah, yeah. And, you know hanging out with the pets yeah. i love her doing and she loves inner work yeah so uh she didn't go anywhere she's still here the teaching is uh even more valuable than it's ever been mm -hmm. and there's nothing there's nothing tarnished about it it is still perfectly valid perfectly accurate and continuing to grow and evolve and improve. So um, that first piece is you can relax, you can all relax, this work works. Mm -hmm. And uh, my beautiful harmonious union continues to prove it. We're not tired of each other, we love each other more than ever. Yep. We want to be closer than ever. And yeah. this new chapter in our relationship <laughs> where I'm doing a lot of the work and the business and she's taking care of the baby and the home life, that brings us closer together. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what, so thank you so much for all your comments. I, I've lost the question. I, it, no, here we go. Yeah. Nope. Just pick anyone. Oh, okay. You know. Shoot, I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay. So Renato says, I'm sorry I couldn't get your question, but hopefully that's, that at least helps. I think we answered Renato that. says, I made my new love list. It is possible that my twin flame could be in front of me and I don't recognize them, or once I get clear, be obvious to me. Yes, Renato, but I would just focus on the spiritual work. The lesson is inner, not focus on your twin flame. You're trying to attach yourself to a person. Attach yourself to God. Fill yourself up inside. Mm -hmm. Just keep filling yourself up inside. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Yeah. Uh, Mara Carmen says, I cured myself of something incurable in my mind and the good habits. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Feel it all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You already answered that question. Just keep scrolling. Okay. Let's get some uh, fresh one here. Melissa Graves says, Any advice for a twin flame that's in prison? It's been 18 years previously over a car theft as a teenager that attempted to escape and got shot. Died four times. Okay, this is pretty intense. That's intense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, your twin flame can never leave. And I would just detach yourself from the drama. Mm -hmm. um, Aprajita again says, "How about see? I'm, we're getting to your question again, so feel free to keep asking questions. Don't scroll yeah. around, just hop in. If you're uh, if you had a question in your heart, ask it. We still got 18 more minutes. Mm -hmm. How do I let go of control and surrender my twin flame journey completely to God? What does God want for you? What what is it? Where is it that you're holding on to control? It's mm -hmm. just a choice, Aprajita. It's a choice. Always a choice." The mm -hmm. how is always a choice. You either choose to do it or you don't. So Jennifer says, when is it okay to contact your twin after being in prolonged separation or communication? Awesome question. This is common. I have been working on myself and doing the mirror exercise. The situation was previous that he was red lighting on me uh, where he wasn't giving me more than one sentence replies and took longer and longer to respond. Communication is a big block in our journey. This is pretty, uh, pretty common, pretty and actually, common. Uh, the other question that we left half answered is about freedom. If uh, you feel, if your twin flame feels like you expect something of them emotionally, like you're putting, we're talking about this in, in my live classes too a lot, if you're putting your emotions on them, if you It's heavy when you do that, you mm -hmm. know? If you want to give them your feelings, they don't want that, that's not for them, they don't care. Even if, if you gave it to them, you'd feel so good and you could give them more good feelings. They don't want to be weighed down at all. They don't want to feel trapped by your feelings. And ultimately, what you, th what you think you need to do in order to have them is to trap them. Uh, that's not it. You don't trap a twin flame. They are free. <laughs> this sounds like the next video game. <laughs> How to trap a twin flame. You don't. You don't. <laughs> it's a 100-hour video all game. All the failed attempts at traps. <laughs> Oh, this one got away! Ah. It'd be the worst game. It'd be the worst game ever. A hundred hours of losing. You never succeed. In the end, it's like, well, sorry, I guess you learned you can't trap a twin. Yeah. Better luck next time! And then you just go and pick some berries, and there's your sexy man just sleeping close by, and he wakes up and sees you being all cute picking berries, minding your own business. And then he's attracted And then to he's you. attracted to you, because you stopped giving a shit. So, exactly. <laughs> And uh, one of my, my students, Brian uh, Levine, just talked about, you know, he just did this. He had two months of no communication with his twin flame. Mm. And uh, he had a really beautiful post. Um, maybe someone, uh, if you search in Brian Levine, you can see it. I think it's the most recent post right now on the open forum. And he talks about he didn't have any attachment to her anymore. He didn't need anything from her. 
It was yeah. just very minimal, very light. He let her go and let her be free to choose. Mm -hmm. Do you want me or not? You're free. Yeah. And that's what Shalia and I are like every day. Shalia yeah. is free to come and go as she pleases. Mm -hmm. Here she is. And I was delighted to find out uh, a couple hours ago that she was going to yeah. bless us with her presence. I'm not controlled in any way. And Jeff never guilted me or asked me to come to this or to any of the live talk shows previous or mm. any of his class and nothing he just lets me be as free as a bird and i come and go as i please and <laughs> you know so when i do do something like this like he's really delighted and it's like extra mm. special and it's not like, expected of me well i'm just really grateful and i found you right, know, yeah. at the beginning when you first started talking i had tears well up in my eyes and no. i composed oh, myself I found I'm <laughs> so grateful oh. to, uh, to have you here. Yeah, well, I, I love just, you. Oh, I love you too. You <laughs> just bring so much joy and so much presence and so much divinity to this. No, oh, thank and, you. Uh, I feel so, appreciated. I'm just so glad and grateful to have you here. You. And what a privilege and a blessing. Both Twin Flame Ascension School and Life Purpose Class and all of our recorded products, mm. you're there. Thank, I know. Doing this. Yeah, I am. Emanating your presence. Thank you. It's yeah, I just, you know, I, I was really enjoying, you know, um, watching you like everyone else is watching us right now. And, you yeah. know, it, it's, re it's really nice to support you in the way that God asks me to support you and not in the way that you think I should support you. Yeah, I don't have any expectations. And, like, when you allow me to support you in the way that God guides, like, you're happier. Mm -hmm. And I'm happier. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, like, I do miss you, but I didn't need you. Yeah, I don't like that feeling. Like, mm -hmm. if he's... Like my rising sign is Sagittarius, and anytime I start to feel someone needing me or wanting my attention or mm -hmm. anything like that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like my rising Sag is like psh, out the door. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So, so uh, it's about releasing attachment, and when you're you feel good when you're ready to communicate, probably try communicating in a very surface level very gentle very light and easy keep it as light as possible mm -hmm. and notice any desire to control or trap uh anywhere that you don't help your twin flame be free and mm -hmm. don't do that mm -hmm. more comments coming in shall i found my twin says sudeep you will you read my book you will you, uh, follow my work yeah you can definitely find them yeah. I miss you, but I don't need you, says Kanisha. Dania says, why is the DM so silent? how they think? It's a great question. Uh, the masculine values freedom above all else. If he feels weighted down, uh, you, you're gonna, you're not going to hang around. He is most prosperous when he's free. Yeah. So if you can find a way to attract him and give him, expand his freedom and communicate that to him, mm -hmm. uh, he wants to be around you all the time. Right. I'm like, ah! <laughs> this is me around Shalia. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's because she doesn't try to force me into anything. No. She and, invites. And the times that I tried, especially like in our early years, uh, oh man, we would fight and <laughs> we would be upset and we'd go to bed yeah. angry with each other, wake oh, up grumpy, all that stuff. And I was like, I don't want to live like this. And it, it just mm -hmm. feels bad when I try to control you and you try to control me. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and, and we'd always, the solution and the answer would always arise from each other too. I'd be mm -hmm. like, well, you, you shouldn't need anything from me. You know, mm -hmm. what, what could I ever give you that you can't give yourself? Yeah. And it was hard at first to learn yeah. that lesson. And you can learn it together, or you can learn it. Uh, with God, but with God. it must be learned. It has to be learned. We have to learn it all. You know, like you have to take your driver's test and pass it in order to drive, uh, operate a motor vehicle. And you can scam and get around, but as soon as you get as soon as you get caught, caught like it's big consequences. And the same right. is true of Harmonious Union. Like you can scam your way to it, and a lot of talkers uh, on the internet will help you scam your way into it. But it's the same thing as driving without a license until you actually master the spiritual lesson you're not going to actually be able to have the spiritual blessing of harmonious union. Right. And that's why this community of certified Ascension coaches and Twin Flame Ascension School mm -hmm. and all the support uh, that's available here to you, it was created. It's not so we can just run our mouths. I think it's awfully boring for us. Uh, it's so that we can be of service to you so that you can have your harmonious Twin Flame union. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's we get some more questions, yeah. Yeah. More questions. How do you know that you're twins? There's a lot of stuff on there. So uh, Tia says, I don't know if my twin is my twin or if my soulmate is my twin. I guess I just have to keep asking God for clarity and self-love for it to be revealed. Both my twin and my soulmate are separated right now. you got to walk the spiritual journey. Yeah. And that will provide you clarity. And you have to want clarity more than you want them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to let, let them both go. Mm-hmm. And uh, attach yourself to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. Keep your questions coming to you. A great. lot to think about in that little, in that small sentence. Oh, my battery is running low. So uh, uh, let's let's do this. You want me to plug it in? No, no. Why don't we just spend the last 10 minutes talking to each other? Oh, okay. I so, like... you, I mean, like, we... We did the we did the questions thing. There's plenty of them. I'm really sorry we're not going to get to all of them. Um, sorry, but I think that Our this, laptop had to die. this is a valuable opportunity. Yeah. To talk to you, uh, and I think that you know people probably want to hear about you. and want to hear about okay. our relationship. And okay. Yeah. What what's what's it like uh, having me as your twin flame? <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> um, it's really interesting. Uh, it feels like. Okay, hold on. This is, you know, this is not an opportunity to, to kiss my butt and say nice things about me. That's not what you're doing, is it? No, what? No. Okay, I just want to make sure that you're being honest, you're not just being nice, because uh, we're on camera. No. Okay, my job is to make sure we get to honesty, and I want to make sure that they, they know I, uh, you know, I'm pretty there. sure I was being honest. Okay, You okay. know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty honest. I know you know? are, but... Sometimes, some of the new people. sometimes people on YouTube, I find they read into me all wrong, and that can get annoying. But I'm, I'm always honest and upfront. Yeah, I know that about you too. Yeah, that's why I was clarifying. Yeah, yeah. No, um, yeah. I feel like my first name is my boy, adventurous. <laughs> you know, because like that's to, like every day. This feels like an adventure with you and with God, and like that's really fun for me because it means mm-hmm. like. While I get that stability and that consistency that our relationship provides, mm-hmm. it's there's also like that sense of like freshness and newness and like adventure and like oh what's gonna what's gonna happen today? And I feel like my life wasn't my life was a little bit slower before I was with you. Yeah. Like it was still like an adventure, it was still sure. fun and all that, but like I feel like you really amplified that and you really like contribute a lot of that mm-hmm. energy and like to me that's really fun because I think I experience a lot of God in that way because mm-hmm. I think it's about inner freedom and inner exploration and you know like it's funny like the first thing that like, you think would come to my mind would be like our romance mm-hmm. but I think like for me like that is our romance mm-hmm. a big part of it, part of it yeah. yeah you know um of course, like, you know, intimacy and all that, like, that's <laughs> part of our, our romance is we definitely just, like, experienced, um, you know, like, we had a bit of, like, what do you call it, like, a, a, a fast, a sex fast, because I've, <laughs> I've been undergoing we had a nine-day sex fast. Yeah, because I'm undergoing IVF right now, and so... Someone was asking about a baby update, so here's your baby update. Oh, there's my baby update. Yeah. We have some uh, embryos fertilized, and, uh, you know, they're going to be ready to go soon. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, so, you know, because uh, you don't want to injure your ovaries and stuff. And so that felt like a reset button, and I'm like, wow, you know, um, <laughs> it, it put a lot in perspective to uh-huh. me for us, because like we've been having sex almost every day for like seven, seven years. years, yeah. And then to like take nine days off, like we both look like we were going through like hard withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. But anyway, enough about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah, like just a sense of adventure every day, and mm-hmm. and just like having. Um, like just sharing our life together like I have a companion mm-hmm. and that like I'm not alone um, I'm not alone you know like you live with me in my inner life and that's very exciting <laughs> it's really emo- I mean we're talking about it very casually and but like it's really emotional for me to, mm-hmm. to hear you talk about this this is really intimate for us to share this with you yeah and you know we're actually like pretty hermit we're hermit well, people. I think we're very conservative when we talk about our relationship mm-hmm. and our love because it's so sacred and like we'll, we will, we start to get emotional and start to cry, yeah. <laughs> and start to weep on each other's shoulders about how much we love each other and how so wonderful life is. What you should take away from this is we're only giving you the tiniest grain of the the joy and the juicy beauty of it, and 
I think most harmonious unions from our work will, will be are the same way. Yeah. They're not flashy. They're not you know wearing the whole thing out on camera for you to see. Right. Uh, you have to really get to know them and, and deeply. Right. I have. saw this really lame YouTube uh, thumbnail that was like, which couple is the you know rate the best couple oh like between like God. two YouTuber couples? And I'm like. Bleh. <laughs> you know, that. You know really and they're doing the posing, wearing bikini, you know, what do you like us more? It's just so superficial and, mm -hmm. and like personality based. Like there's nothing there. Yeah. But anyway, um doesn't you can't see the whole thing. You can't see the whole thing eyes. with your eyes. Yeah. You gotta yeah. like anyway. It's the deep. That's what twin flame harmony is really is extremely deep. But yeah, because it's so deep it's sometimes very like it's hard to convey it on like screen I guess I don't know like what advice do you have for someone uh, who has been struggling with their ascension journey for a long time whether it be someone who's been with our work for years and years and years and hasn't found the end result they desire like harmonious union or someone who has been struggling uh, in their romantic life for years and years and years and years and maybe they've just come here to work or not what, what advice do you have for someone who's been struggling a long time with uh, their twin flame journey I would say just to um, and continue having faith because if you don't have faith on this journey, you're really um, like you're cultivating spiritual poverty, and that is going to feel like a loss and a void in your life. And you want to start um, filling up that void, and you want to start filling up your life with love, and um, you know like self love is the way romancing yourself is the way like building the le moving forward into the life of your dreams like that was one of my final twin flame lessons where i was like i just can't care anymore if i'm gonna have a man come in my life i choose to live the life of my dreams now <laughs> <laughs> you know and i'm like i'm gonna build a career and you know and i had all these ideas i you know I, I had a lot of these conversations out on hikes when i was living in sedona i'm like I'm going to build my career, I'm going to write a book, I'm going to go talk on stage, I'm going to have children, Some, you know, I'll do IVF or, you know, I'll, I'll find some guy that will just, you know, he'll sign off parental rights or something. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have the life of my dreams. And <laughs> then you and I met like a few weeks later, like literally like two weeks later. And I'm like, oh my God, God heard me. Ah! Mm -hmm. I cried. I didn't start crying. <laughs> So it's that you don't need to focus on your twin flame. Mm -hmm. what, what is it? <laughs> well, because I fell in love with myself. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't want to come here and cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think like I can't I can't talk anymore. But, You're doing um, great. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is where the feminine is really hurting. Mm -hmm. Fall in love with you. And not needing someone else to fall in love with you for you. It's really yeah. loving you. Yeah. It's really getting to know you, really caring about you, really li being willing to be with you first, being happy being with you. And until you find that, you're not going to find someone to be happy with you. Because who could be happy with you if you're not happy with you first? Who could be with you if you're not with you first? You'll never, and never, ever find someone to be with the real you until you are. And uh, it's about your dreams. And this is why we have Life Purpose class. It's true. Yeah, Life Purpose class was a favorite. Mm -hmm. A huge favorite of mine. Because, I mean, I, I mean, we live and breathe life purpose all the time. Like, mm -hmm. our life is so purpose-driven, purpose-focused. It's really fun. And it's a natural component of your life and of your Twin Flame Union. Mm -hmm. So That's really powerful. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like being with me? It's humbling. <laughs> it's humbling. Every day it's humbling. Aww. Good. It's uh it's inspiring and it, it's unspeakable. Like mm -hmm. it, it's knowing that everything that I am, uh like is with you. Mm -hmm. It's um it's total surrender. Shit, <laughs> this is why we don't talk about our relationship like this. Well, you asked. I'm not going to stop. Well, because you asked You're me. You're looking at the time. It's not done yet. I'm not done to answer your question. I'm like, I got to go lie on bed, in my bed and cry. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? It's time to go lie down and no, cry. No, you calm down now. You asked. I'm going to finish. It's true. I'm calm. I'll, I'll calm down. If 
it's uh, it's it's being like supported in who I am. Mm. You know, it's being known and seen. Yeah, in, in a world where uh, like you're the only one. Mm -hmm. It's having a companion, a partner, that um, fits me and meets me. Yeah. It's someone who sees me and knows me and loves me uh, no matter what. Uh, it's just unspeakable. It's like something that I want to keep safe and protect with all that I am. And, you know, like no matter what happens and no matter where you know, where we are in life, that like I always want to stand, you know, in front of between you and anything that will cause you <laughs> even the slightest bit of discomfort and unpleasantness. Yeah, you've been a real gem about that. I really appreciate you for that. And you're mine. <laughs> <laughs> you and, do. You've made my life very nice. Well, you've made mine nice too, you know. Just as what you see that I've done for you, you've done, you know, more for me than I could ever repay. Yeah. And uh, the more I try to repay, the more you fill me up inside. You don't have to. <laughs> well, you know, like I, I'm an eternal debt to you for, uh, for a beautiful yeah. life. I wave it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't! Yeah. You can. It just it's makes mutual. Me, well, yeah, it just makes me want to give more to you. And, and I give more to you, and you, you give me ten times that back. <laughs> So I'm just I'm digging deeper and deeper into your debt, and well, there's no debt. You know, well, it's not like I don't feel owned by you. I feel right. I right. feel free and love with you. Oh, good. Me too. And uh, I just it's like a partner who co-creates all my dreams with me. Every single dream, you're right there with me, and and it's an unspeakably valuable, unspeakably beautiful, and unspeakably freeing, mm. and uh, incredibly empowering. You can't. You can't possibly, as a masculine, invest in something more valuable than your twin flame. I mean, a god. Um, other than that, right. God yourself. There's no endeavor. There's no business endeavor. There's no thing you can go out and do that will give you more than your your twin flame. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the last thing I end this on for the masculines, we're I, we're all pretty uh, money driven, financially driven, career driven. Mm -hmm purpose-driven, status-driven. You want to make something of yourself and you want to have pride in who you are and what you can achieve and, and, and share with the world. That gives you a sense of empowerment and well-being uh, beyond like, pretty much anything else. Uh, general, this is what, what men, our mindset, right? They got together a bunch of billionaires, all men, um, maybe, mostly, or at least mostly men. And... Uh, they, they had them in a room for an hour, and they couldn't find anything in common except for one thing. Is that every single one of them had an extremely supportive spouse. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it was the, that was the lesson that they all said was, my spouse was extremely supportive, and that was uh, hugely What's instrumental to my right. success. Yeah. You cannot possibly get a more supportive spouse than your twin flame. It's true. And I hope that we've given you at least a little taste and example of it. In, in this uh, final Twin Flames live talk show. So, yeah. to Shalia's great relief. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I'm not like great. I know, I'm just yeah, no. okay. uh, This is the end <laughs> of our time. live talk shows. If you want to hang out with me more live, uh, you can, uh, I do have an opportunity. I've got four uh, live group coaching classes. They're insanely valuable. If you'd like me answering your questions, uh, we do this on a consistent basis all every week, and you just pop, you're in the group coaching class, and it's immensely beneficial. You can ask your questions, your classmates ask theirs, and yeah. we're vibing, and people really are, vibing, yeah. lives are changing quick. Yeah. It's like TFAST 2.0, but it's private, no recordings, come on in, uh, there's still a few spots right. available. And get the support you need for mm -hmm. your twin flame journey, because you're really worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is continuing. Uh, it is available uh, in my live coaching classes. They're extremely awesome. I've only got four of them, and there's only a few spots left. And uh, there's, it's, it's amazing things are happening. So come check it out at TwinFlamesUniverse.com. Click on the Coaching with Jeff tab, and uh, my, uh, my staff will get you set up. So <laughs> thank you all for a beautiful mini-series of the Twin Flames live talk show. Yes, thank you. God bless and namaste. Namaste. See you around. See you around. Take care. <laughs> oh, I love you too. I'm gonna mess up your makeup. Ah, Ow! It's already messed up. I did it again. <laughs> Bye.